Okay, Mesechet Yivamot, Perak Yud Mishnah Bet. Second Mishnah, 10th chapter of Yivamot. We're continuing to talk about this really sad case where a woman remarried, her husband was reported dead, and then he, he returned. So we learned in the last Mishnah that there were two types of cases. One is called the Seit al pi Eid Echad, which is the Seit al pi Beitin, meaning Beitin had to, give her, uh, had to give her an instruction that she could marry. Why? Because Eid Echad, if she only has one witness, then, then that, that's, a, that's a special dispensation for her. Okay? And we said if her husband returns, the halacha is tetzei mizeh u mizeh. On the other hand, we had, he said, uh, api shnei edim, two witnesses, that's shelo api beitin. You don't need beitin to tell her that because it's obvious. Still, we said the halacha is tetzei mizeh u mizeh. She's, she's, she's in terrible shape. She has to leave both, both of her husbands if the, second, if the first one comes back. So the Misha says, what about the halachic aspect? What about the, the spiritual aspect? The... the the, the notion of kapara, of korbanot. The person that does a sin, makes a, a violates a diorita, and then he has to bring a korban. If he does it, even if he does it, mishogeg. Shogeg means by accident. The Mishra says, Nisait api beitin, if she married, based on beitin, the hora'a, the teaching of beitin, teitzei, we said, she has to leave her husband, the second one and the first one, uptura mina korban. And she is exempt from bringing a korban. Why is she exempt? If Beitin told the person to do an action, they instructed, Hora'ah is an instruction of Beitin, they, the Beitin said, okay, go do this, and you do it. And it turns out that they were, they, it was wrong, that they were, it was a sin. Now it was wrong, because it turns out her original husband was alive, but that was the Hora'ah Beitin. But turn me not Korban, you're exempt from bringing a Korban, you don't bring a sacrifice because Beitin told you to do it. But, lo nisat al pi Beitin, if she married, the Bartir, remember, has this uh, has the version Shelo Api Beitin Ella Bishne Edin. Okay, Teitzei Bechayevet Bekorban. She is required to bring a korban. The Bartir says Chayev Bekorban, even though it's two witnesses. Okay, Deshogeget He. She is a shogin, and he says again Velei Tilchat Akiyam Matnitin. The Allah is not like this Mishnah. Ella Bein Nisait Api Idei Beitin Beid Echad Bein Api Shne Edim. Whether she marries one by one with, with, with one witness or two, chayavim bekorbani, he ubaal asheri. Both she and her second husband must bring a korban. So according to this mishnah, she's exempt from the korban. According to the second mishnah, the halacha, the bar tzedur says she, both of them have to bring a korban. Yafek koach beitin shopotra min a korban. So therefore, beitin has the power to exempt her from the korban according to the mishnah, not according to halacha. Horua beitin lina say beitin gave her instruction to remarry. And she went, she got married, but kilkala, the kakel means to degrade herself. I.e., kilkala means, the, bar, the kahati says, she married in an asur way. She married, she's now an almana, she married a kohen gadol. She married a mamzer, but he said, I could remarry. No, no, no. Chayevet be korban. She has to bring a korban, but she violated isur. Shalohi tirua el inase. The only thing they permitted to do was remarry. They never permitted her to remarry in a prohibited fashion. Stop here. We'll dedicate our learning. The memory of uh, my father, Arab Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman. Have a good day.